Hey, it's time for Tech Talk number 30. Whoa. Hard to believe we've this will be the 30th. And boy, do you guys watch this. You know, I know we have a lot of people that watch it live, and we'd love you to ask the questions, but a lot of you watch it in the replay and listen to the podcast, and we're glad that you're there. A lot more people than we've had before. And we're here to help you with your home studio. And we've got stuff to talk about tonight about, uh, you know, something about Catalina uh, with Max. Got any other tech stuff uh, on your, your tray there, George? Mainly just, uh, you know, I just want to mainly answer a lot of questions tonight, you know, because I feel like there's probably going to be a lot more people still kind of getting it together with getting their Source Connect going or understanding what need they really need to do this do they have to be on ethernet can they still just kind of pull it off with wi-fi and good question so we'll talk about that kind of stuff i'll mainly do your questions tonight all right fantastic we had lots of them last time and we're glad to have them tonight so let's get charged up let's ready to roll get your questions out and tune in now for vobs tech talk from the outer reaches they came Bearing the knowledge of what it takes to properly record your voiceover audio. And together, from the center of the VO universe, they bring it to you now. George Whittem, the engineer to the VO stars. A Virginia Tech grad with the skills to build, set up, and maintain the professional VO studios of the biggest names in VO today. And you, Dan Leonard, the voiceover home studio master. A professional voice talent with the knowledge and experience to help you create a professional sounding home VO studio. And each week, they allow you into their world, making the complex simple, debunking the myths of what it takes to create great sounding audio, answering your questions, showing you the latest and greatest in VO tech, and having a dandy time doing it. Welcome to VoiceOver Body Shop Tech Talk. VoiceOver Body Shop Tech Talk is brought to you by VoiceOverEssentials.com, home of Harlan Hogan Signature Products, Source Elements, remote studio connections for everyone, VoiceActorWebsites.com, where your VO website isn't a pain in the butt, VOHeroes.com, become a hero to your clients with award-winning voiceover training, J. Michael Collins Demos, when quality matters, and VoiceOver Extra, your daily resource for VO success. And now, live to drive from their super secret clubhouse and studio in Sherman Oaks, California. Here are the guys. Hey there, I'm Dan Leonard. And I'm George Whittem. And this is VoiceOver. Body shop or VO BS tech talk. talk tech talk tech talk. Everybody loves tech talk, George. It's my favorite. It's my favorite too. I mean, no offense to our awesome guest, Pat, that was on because that's obviously a blast. But my first love is talking tech, it is with me as well. Uh, and we've had lots of interesting talk this week with lots of people who need help with tech. Uh, and of course yes. we, we need to mention that, you know, if you're new to this show and we know there's a lot more people watching than used to be, uh, we're here to help you with your home voiceover studio. Now we've seen the memos from the agencies and the production houses and our agents, although it's turned into a giant game of adult telephone where the recording engineers are talking to the producers and directors who were talking to the the you know, the account managers and the advertising agencies and the other things who are then talking to the casting directors who are then talking to the agents and what we're getting from our agents is you need to have uh something called slice connect and you've got to have this snow tools. We're not sure what it is, but you've got to be really good at it. And that's where the only, and, and it's like, now here you got to have source connect pro. Yeah. That's not, not the standard one. Cause the standard one's free. That's right. There's so much confusion. In fact, there's so much that I started putting a hashtag on Facebook. Every time I make a correction to somebody's misinformation called hash hashtag source connect myths. 
Yes. <laughs> there are a lot of them. Yeah. <laughs> Which is a subcategory of home voiceover studio myths. It's, it's exactly. So it's a, it's a large volume. Anyway, we're here to help you with that. We're here to answer your questions. We're here to solve your problems. And, but we do it professionally. And every home studio, no matter who you are, is a unique custom built thing. And it's not what people think it is. It's not, you know, windows to another studio with guitars and gold records hanging on the wall and, and a 32 track, you know, mixing board. This is, I think, George, what most people are really fearing, especially if they haven't done a home studio before is they're, they're used to what they see when they walk into a studio, which is usually, well, all right, craft service. And, and the big mixing board and all this. You don't have that. You're in your closet or you're in a booth somewhere in your home. You've created a setup like that. Every room is different. Every voice is different. And every situation is different. So there's no one size fits all, which is why you need someone like Mr. Whittem here. I can oh, yeah. This is our plug time. Yes. Um, yeah. You can find me over at georgethe.tech. Um, georgethetech.com also will work if that kind of makes you twitch a little bit when you hear that domain. Um, and there's a whole bunch of stuff you can do over there through my tech support menu. Um, if you're under a really big tight deadline, there's also emergency support where I basically open up my, my schedule to far more hours at a little bit of a premium. Um, you can check that out. Um, and there's also just a lot of information I've tried to compile support videos, things on Source Connect uh and and the like so go ahead and check that out and book time with me if you need it and also i know dan does a kind of the same thing over at uh i'm sorry over here homevoiceoverstudio.com and it's uh a, you know it's my website i talk about a lot of the stuff that goes on with home studios and what you need to do uh the highlight of my my site is the specimen collection cup uh, which is that a Dropbox. Is. Yes. <laughs> and it's, it's been very busy lately. Uh, you know, like <laughs> it's been, people have been submitting their audio saying, uh, somebody says this about this or something. Go in there, follow the instructions, click on the specimen collection cup. And for $25, I will analyze your audio and see if it is up to the standards that George and I, and a couple of our friends who are production engineers, Emmy Award production engineer, you know, winning production engineers and, and top automotive engineers and voiceover engineers, guys who really understand what vo home voiceover studio is supposed to be about. And because as we like to say, if it sounds good, it is good. That's right. So we're going to talk about that. So the first thing I think you, you want to talk about in your tech update has to do with you know, I haven't seen it. Uh, I mean, I've probably done the update. Now I'm, a, I, maybe I haven't. I'm afraid to do it. There was an update with Catalina. <laughs> I'm hoping by this time the fine people at Apple Computers have figured this one out. Well, um, unfortunately, I have a friend who's a, a kind of an IT dude, and he'll text me when these kind of things pop up on his radar. And he reached out to me on Easter Sunday, and he said, Beware, there's a new update for Mac OS Catalina that's 10.15.4, and the update could possibly uh, crash or take down your MacBook. Um, there is um, more detail on that from the article that I located online from Tech Radar. Um, the title of the article is Mac OS Catalina 10.15.4 gets a stability update, but reports claim it's breaking some MacBooks. So it seems to be specific to MacBooks, maybe not necessarily Mac minis or iPads from what I can tell. Um, you know, here's the thing. And, and I fall victim to the need to update and upgrade as, as often as other people do. But I, I've been really, really trying to, to drink my own Kool-Aid here and tell you, <laughs> if your system is running well, if it's doing what it needs to do, if you can count on it and you feel rely, you feel like you can rely on your system the way it is right now, put it on ice. Don't update it. Okay, maybe there's some exceptions if you need security updates. Apple does, and Windows as well, release security updates from time to time. And that's a different situation. I do recommend in most cases installing 
a specific security update. And it'll say that when you look at your updates. But system updates, like update to Mac, the next version of Mac OS, certainly it almost goes without saying, but also upgrades. So if you're on Mojave going to Catalina, um, I really recommend avoiding it as long as you can, because honestly, they're always updating stuff. And this is a great reminder as to why it's not necessarily good to be on the most current OS. Um, this is a prime example of why being stuck back on Mojave is a really good idea. Apple cannot put out an update that will break Mojave because Mojave is finished. There are no updates for Mojave. There are security updates, but no system updates. It's at 10 point, 14 point, whatever, whatever it is, five or something. And it will always be there because it's fully baked. So this is another thing that just, it's a good way to protect yourself to not have to worry about, should I update? If you're always a one OS version behind. Now, one more little tip on that. One thing that's annoying about uh, Apple product is if you want to get Catalina, but the next OS is now the released OS, let's say sometime in November, what is the next one going to be? I don't know yet, but whatever it is, um, Griffith Park, let's call it that. So if, <laughs> if OS Griffith Park comes out um, and you want to have Catalina, you may not be able to get it easily. So what you can do, a little trick is download the update or upgrade for Catalina from the App Store now. Just download it. And that means you'll have the update or the upgrade uh, application on the computer. But just don't run that upgrade until Griffith Park comes out. And then you really will be covering all your bases. So anyway, just a little warning to all you Mac people and you Windows people can snicker because don't worry, you're it's you'll, you, you've dealt with the <laughs> same problem. You just don't want to admit it. Anyway, <laughs> that's that. Um, I, right now I'm kind of playing around on a new floor mat I just got from, uh, from online. I think I had it on Amazon. Um, if you guys stand and work at your desk a lot, like I do, I've pretty much gone exclusively standing now. Um, my lower back can get sore after a while. Um, I'm not sure if I'm slouching. I might need to do some more, you know, back workouts, but I found this floor mat called the kangaroo. Here's the full title. Kangaroo original premium anti-fatigue active comfort mat, varied terrain, acupressure, massage, ergonomic floor mats, kitchen, home, work, office, stand-up desk, long periods of standing black. That's the whole title, <laughs> the damn thing on Amazon. Um, just look for a kangaroo original anti-fatigue mat. Maybe give it a shot. It's got different surfaces on it. It's got some little, actually, let me show you. And now Mr. Whitham will demonstrate. <laughs> it took me that long to bend over, pick it up. <laughs> My back is still <laughs> sore. Um, but it's got different um, surfaces and different little raised sections on it. So it lets you kind of change your feet position and kind of move around. It's got this big um, thing on the back that you can kind of lean back on. And um, there it is. More comfortable. And it's got a really, it, it's pretty nice. It's pretty nice. I'm, I'm still working on the back pain thing to see if I can figure out how to get rid of the, the stiff lower back. But um, it's nice being able to change your foot position and have something to stand on and so, instead of a flat floor. So I, I can recommend it. Hmm. Last thing I'll mention before we get into the questions and discussing idiot clients, <laughs> um, Vanguard V4. Well, we've had this mic on the show before. Dan was nice enough to swing by last week and throw it out the window down. The no, just kidding. <laughs> Take it. He, he came down. <laughs> he came down the driveway um, and dropped off the Vanguard V4 for me to give it a trial run. So I'm using that mic tonight in figure eight mode, which I kind of like because it doesn't pick up any reflection underneath or on the sides of the mic. And I've got computer monitors, a desk, all kinds of stuff going on here. I think it sounds pretty sharp. Um, I'll do a proper review of it as well as I promised I would, but uh, that's what I'm speaking into tonight. So anyway, that's my little bit of tech update. And what do you got for us, Dan? Well, you know, is this a rant? I'm not gonna, I'm, you know, I've been ranting. All week long. <laughs> and, you know, certain, you know, there, I, I've been ranting with an agent of mine who understands completely what I've been talking about. And, and I've been Initials talking to ES, right? What, what's that? 
Initials ES. Uh, maybe. Well, no. Okay. I I had another discussion with with ES <laughs> earlier in the week, uh, but we okay. won't get into that. Uh, well, maybe we will. The thing is, is I'm hearing from a lot of you out there that you're getting certain specs from clients. And the impression I get is that the clients that they're working with are somewhat down the food chain from the actual information. And what we're you mean the game of telephone, the tech game of the game of tech telephone. Yes, because what we're hearing is, well, first off, we all know what my most hated phrase in digital audio, and that is broadcast quality. What on, I, I'm so I'm like they're saying it has to be broadcast quality, and my response is usually, could they define that? Um, because they don't know what it no, means. They can't. <laughs> Uh, I think the best definition for that, and then never use this definition again, uh, of broadcast quality is it doesn't sound bad. Because we, we, we always say, you know, my favorite axiom that I use all the time is, is the idea of your home voiceover studio is not to sound great. It's to sound like you with the corollary of the idea is to not sound bad. And there's right. a lot of stuff that will make your audio sound bad. And I think what they're asking is, well, we don't, we want it to sound good. Right, could you define that? We, we don't want it to sound like you're in a bathroom in the Versailles hall of mirrors or all these other things, because people, finally, there are people who we've been telling for years and years and years, you've, you know, you, you've got to have a home studio. You've got to be able to record from home. And I know there was a client you and I were both talking to this week as well. I have to get the source connect thing and then we'll work on having, you know, a better studio. And I'm like, no, it doesn't work that way. Um, so there's, there's a lot of miscommunication out there, but I, I put in our notes here, idiot clients. I, I'm not saying that clients are idiots. It's that if they they don't know what we do on our side of the glass, because as we like to say, you, they don't have to see how the sausage is made. They just want to hear it. And, right. and they listen to it on different things and they listen to it on laptop speakers or 1942 Zenith AM console radio or whatever it is that they have. Uh, and it, everybody, mm, no, hears I think that's the, just you, Dan. What? Well, thank you. Uh, there's, there's, it sounds different to everybody. And if you're listening on laptop speakers, it may not have perhaps the depth or the lower frequency response that your actual file has. And if they hear it that way, they're like, well, can you do it? So it's, it sounds good on my laptop as opposed to, as we like to say, if it sounds good, it is good. And they may not mm -hmm. know what good is. So how do you communicate this back to your clients? I think was the, the topic that I wanted to toss out there. And I know you have to do this a lot too, George. I always find and people who work with me know, I ask a lot of questions like, what do you mean? Because they'll throw out terms that are undefinable, like broadcast quality. Uh, we want to change the terminology to professional quality uh, audio because digital audio is completely different from what they used to do on leave it to beaver and the six o'clock news. And in 1968, uh, just watch old, you know, watch old tape of the, the Huntley Brinkley report and hear what really broadcast audio consisted of then, because most of the time, most, none of the stuff is for broadcast. It's for voiceover for an engineer or a producer on the other end to take and manipulate the way they want. Yet there are still some clients out there. Well, can't you add lots of compression so you can sound like this guy? Well, you can always hire that guy. Because you know, but you want to be able to give them what I like to call a tabla rosa. You want to give them a a clean slate of audio that they can manipulate, unless well, they specifically say do this, that, and the other thing. You also get the I want to sound like I do on this demo. Here's my demo reel. Right. And you listen to it and you go. This is the context of a demo. It, this is the way a final mix would sound. It's not the same thing. Right. Yeah, I actually had a, I had a client talk to me today about uh, a client was saying, uh, maybe you need a different mic, one that picks up bass better. Mm. Like, <laughs> 
Well, in, in, in which Generally case I said, just, just get closer to the mic. Does that sound a little deeper? You know, um, it really is proximity effect. Yeah. yeah, we were talking last week with with Pat Fraley about proximity effect because he's a master of using a microphone and and how, you know, you can learn the basic techniques of working with a mic so that you sound like you're having a conversation with somebody. Uh, but there's there's problems with not knowing mic technique. But once you learn it, then you can learn to play. So if you're supposed to be your dad, you know, yelling downstairs to the, hey, what are your kids doing down there? You learn those sorts of things. Mic technique is, you know, amongst the three things that we always talk about, the acoustics of your room, sound coming in and sound not reverberating around, microphone technique, where you are addressing the mic so you're not, you know, saying Peter Piper picked a peck of pickled peppers. And, and that's... and. You know, you don't need a pop screen. That was the argument I had with ES this week is he tweeted on, on Twitter that there is some person who, uh, who out there and he used sort of a, you know, a derogatory term talking about, you don't need a pop screen. Well, he just, you know, and then I said, thanks a lot. You know, I really appreciate a good friend like you saying this. He says, no, 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 no. If I would have said walrus face doofus, then you would have known I was talking about you. <laughs> oh, God. And, he can get away with that. Huh? Yeah, well, he's he's <laughs> one of those people that can get away with it. Um but anyway, that uh, that was my rant on this because ask your clients to define their terms because yeah, what we're hearing straight. is this terminology gap. They use different terms on their side of the glass than we do. Things like source connect. Uh, <laughs> what what are some of the ones you've heard this week? Well, I mean, there's there's definitely some confusion about Source Connect standard versus pro, what the voice actor needs. Um, one major agency is telling people that they need Source Connect Pro when really they don't. Voice actors that need to connect to a studio only needs to have the standard variation. And part of that is really down parts. It's also just because of naming convention. Obviously, if you're a voice actor, the thought would be you'd need the pro version if you're a pro professional and you're connecting to a professional studio. Um, but the standard version is completely fully featured and does everything a voice actor could possibly need. So that's one of the major misnomers. You don't need to make that next giant step up in cost to have the pro version. Um, a lot of people ask about Wi-Fi. Can I get away with using Wi-Fi for my Source Connect sessions? And um, and I always tell them, like, listen, you know, I, I'll use a dumb analogy, but it's kind of like, well, can I get away with driving to the 7-Eleven without my seatbelt this time? <laughs> yeah, really. You know, it's like, yes, that time but you didn't have an accident, right. you know, <laughs> so it was fine. <laughs> so, you know, the thing about Wi-Fi is it does work great a lot of the time, um, but it doesn't work great all the time. And you need it to work great all the time when you're doing anything like Source Connect or IPDTL or Source Connect Now, which runs on Chrome or Source Stream Pro or Session Link Pro. There, there's a ton of them, right? You need to have a really consistent connection. So explain to people why that's so worth it was one of them. I got to work with this amazing voice actress over the weekend. She lives in Canada now. She just moved there. And she had to pull off a live, not live, but it was a Source Connect recorded session singing a character voice from some game, I think, or a film. I think actually no, it was a game. So she was doing a character singing the part. The game was produced by a bunch of fellows in Japan. So they're watching live on Zoom and listening and taking, you know, giving direction. Somebody's translating it. And then there's a director who's directing the voices for the video game here in Los Angeles. As you can tell, there was a lot going on. It was a pressure cooker situation. We had tested the system out over the weekend and Wi-Fi was working fine. But she, she took my advice, drilled a hole in the wall, poked an Ethernet cable through the wall of her house and plugged it in. And that was just one less thing that she had to, to worry about on that really important session. So um, it's it's a very good idea to do it. Get get plugged in and you look up something called a power line Ethernet adapter. 
That's another way to be wired, but using your household wiring to do it. It's kind of an interesting little product. So check that out as a, as a workaround. So you don't have to drill holes through floors and ceilings. Yeah. See, now I'm going to be fascinated, but how this entire situation is going to play out in the long run, because we're Me not too. going to be stuck behind the barbed wire here in our own homes with our families for forever. They're going to let us out eventually and we'll go back to whatever. But I think everything is forever changed because now people have to have the home studio and they're going to learn the techniques if they talk to the right people, you know, you, you and me and a few other people. And trust me, there are not a lot of guys out there that really understand specifically home voiceover studio audio. It's, it's a unique environment. And you got to talk to the guys that have built hundreds of these things, not someone who's an expert in one studio. Built They're hundreds wrong. and heard thousands, thousands of people's audio. Yeah. 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 We've heard a lot of, and we've been hearing a lot more of it this last week. Uh, but I think it, it's, it's going to change the business a whole lot, probably to the detriment of several recording studio engineers who are now like, I mean, I got to do this from home. You know, that's the other thing that gets me is that they're demanding that they use all this technology, but they're probably at home too. Right. So yeah. I mean, the, the session this morning, the session this morning was kind of ludicrous. I mean, clearly the, the actor could have been just recording. Um, the person on Source Connect was just capturing the audio. Um, and then, but you know, there, there was, there was some things going on where after this, the take was recorded, they would sometimes play it back and they want to be able to hear the playback. So what, what goes on is like, there's this, we're trying to continue having sessions that happen from home, still feel and operate and work the way the client expects them to, you know, they, they spend a lot of money to produce this thing. Um, probably pay the voice actor quite well, hopefully. And you know, there's a lot of moving parts. So they want it to feel and operate the way the session would have if they were going into a studio. So it def definitely adds a learning curve for everybody. And uh, that was what was interesting. We're only, what, a month into this, and the lady who was directing the game, who, by the way, I checked out her Wikipedia. Holy cow. She's, she's been making a lot of games. Um, she was like, yep, this is the way we're doing things now. For her, it was like just another session. Right. You know, for my client, the actor, it was a big deal. You know, this was Monday morning doing... But for the director, just another session. Let's get this done and move on to the next character we got to record for the game, you know? Yep. So this is normal now. All right. So we'll we'll see what happens. You know, and of course we're we, we invite you to, you know, to contact us and tell us what's going on with you guys and what are you experiencing out there. So uh yeah, and you can write to us at the guys at VOBS.tv if you're not watching this live and you want to inquire to us. We'll be happy to talk to you. Uh, also, if you've got a question for us right now and you're watching the show right now, you can toss your question into the chat room because George and I are going to take a break and then we're going to come back and we're going to tackle all those questions in amazing detail that you will totally understand what we're talking about. And then he and I will try to explain it to ourselves. Anyway, coming up next, your questions on voiceover body shop Tech Talk. This is Ariana Ratner, and you're listening to Voice Over Body Shop, VOBS.TV. Well, hello there. I bet you weren't expecting to hear some big-voiced announcer guy on your new orientation training for Snapchat, were you? This is Virgin Radio. Well, okay, we're not that innocent. There's jeans for wearing and there's jeans for working. Dickies, cause I ain't here to look pretty. She's a champion of progressive values, a leader for California, and a voice for America. It's smart. It's a phone. It's a smartphone. But it's so much more. It's a, the files are ready. Don't forget to pick up the eggs. What time is hockey practice? Check out this song. It's the end of the road for Rick. It's just you and me, Rick. When hope is lost. The I-8 from BMW. Who said saving the planet couldn't be stylish? Hey, it's J. Michael Collins. Bet you think I'm going to try and sell you a demo now, huh? I think they speak for themselves. But I will give you my email. It's jmichael at jmcvoiceover.com. Now, if Dan will stop waxing his mustache for a minute, we'll get back to the show.
It's now time to talk about Harlan Hogan's VoiceOverEssentials.com. Now, today, Amazon Incorporated shipped its last PortaBooth Pro from their inventory. And as you know, the demand for many goods and services needed for those working from home has exceeded supplies. And both their Plus and Pro recording booths are no exception. Now, you may have also experienced long shipping times, even for audio equipment that's in Amazon's inventory. Now, VoiceOverEssentials.com, the manufacturers of the PortaBooth Plus and the PortaBooth Pro and Harlan Hogan Signature Series audio gear, is shipping now. And they have ample inventory of everything voiceover talent, podcasters, and broadcasters need to produce professional-sounding audio from home and on the road. So if you're in need of home VO studio gear, and now that's everybody, go on over to voiceoveressentials.com and see all the great stuff they have that's shipping now. Hi, this is Bill Farmer, and you are watching Voice Over Body Shop. It's great. Over a cord? Me? Oh, okay. So sure. Oh, and we're back. And we're back. You know, I, I think you need to talk a little bit about Source Connect here, George. This is... This is one of those things, again, because they're all asking for it. Now, we've been begging and pleading and telling these studios, this is the, I mean, Joe Cipriano has been telling this, and you've been telling them, and I've been telling them, they're like, oh, no, 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 it's not reliable. Suddenly, that's going to be the standard. <laughs> like, yeah, no, not everybody can afford ISDN, so you got to get Source Connect. So what is it with Source Connect? And what should people, why should people have it? Well, I mean, Source Connect has been around a long time, um, not nearly as long as ISDN, um, but it's been used like full, like, I mean, as far as I know, I have been dealing with the company and their product and making it work for voiceover people for roughly 12 years, I think now, believe it or not. Um, and so it's had a really long, long ramp up to get to where it is now. So they've worked very, very hard to make it more stable, more reliable, um, and uh, better features and so on and so forth. And they've been doing that for quite some time. And also in doing so, trying to get more and more studios on board with using it. And, you know, there are people out there that are champions of the technology like Pat Duke and Joe Cipriano who have told their studios and their clients, like, guys, this is the tool to use. The thing about Source Connect is it's a system that requires a certain level of network uh, configuration to get up and running reliably. You can just install it and you know have your computer on Wi-Fi. Don't do a thing. Just kind of think of it like Skype, and uh, and and likely you'll be okay. But the difference between Source Connect and any kind of video chat, audio chat, Skype, Zoom, such and such is that on those platforms, you'll hear little dropouts and bobbles and loss of audio quality from time to time, and you just become accustomed to it because it's just a phone conversation, so who cares? But with Source Connect and anything like Source Connect where you're streaming audio that's high quality, studio professional quality audio over the internet, that needs a very, very stable internet connection. We're not talking about super fast, doesn't have to be 100 meg up up 100 megabits per second up and down it just needs to be stable so even if your network connection was particularly slow let's say you're stuck in the hinterlands and all you got is dsl there are still people out there definitely you still using dsl don't worry because like even if your dsl is only what 720 kilobits per second upload maybe a little faster download as long as your computer's dedicated to using Source Connect and nothing else in the house is using it, you're not, nobody else in the house is watching Netflix, nobody else is siph siphoning off bandwidth, you're going to be fine. Um, we've been using Source Connect very reliably on slow internet connections like DSL, like I said, for over 10, 12 years. 
So it really just depends on the quality of that connection and the stability of it. That's what's going to make it work great. So, um, yeah, it's just, I think because they've been at this a long time and have, you know, really established themselves in a lot of studios that it's really now there, you know, they've all this time they've put into developing and improving it, creating a support network of people to support it, which they do. They have several people on staff 24 seven. Um, that is now put them in good stead to be able to handle this new demand. You know, they're, they're having a little struggle. Don't get me wrong. They get a, they're getting an, an inundation of clients that are using it. And the support network that they have is having a little trouble keeping up. That's why they create a chat. Right. Um, if you go to source dash elements.com slash chat, there's a free chat there and they've created this chat room where people in the community can all, you know, get together and ask questions and get help to yeah. kind of stopgap the fact that their their own support is a little bit overwhelmed. Yeah. All right. We got lots of tech questions tonight. And we, we do. We love it when we get questions because that's what makes this show work. So we'll start off with Gerard Maguire. Gerard. Gerard says, question for George. Therefore, I shall ask it. Um, if you use Loudmax to meet ACX specs, does it have any negative effect on your audio file? Hmm. You know that plugin, Loud, Dan? Loudmax? Loud it's a, like it maintains a really loud level up front, I would imagine. Yeah, it's like a limiter. Yeah. A limiter. Um, it only if it's done wrong, yeah. Gerard. Um, <laughs> if it's if it is being used correctly, it doesn't have any negative effect on your audio file. It just helps you get the RMS levels that you need to to get to meet the ACX spec. ACX wants your levels, your average RMS, total RMS, depending on what software you're using, to be um, what is it minus twenty three to minus eighteen. That's the range. They want the average level to be. And so uh, Loudmax is a really uh, free plugin, and that's really easy to use to just by adjusting the threshold, set the, uh, the ceiling, I think it's called the ceiling, to minus three, so it can't peak above minus three. And then you can just slide the threshold slider, and the further left you slide it, the louder the audio gets yeah. now a certain point it's not going to sound so great if you overcook it but you, you cook it right that sauce is going to taste good yeah but, cooked on the loud max but that's the issue i think with a lot of software and even with external channel strips and all the stuff that does this if you don't know how to use it you know people think well i've got this piece of equipment i've got that piece of equipment now i should be great but you know if if you don't know where the cold water is and the hot water is on it you're going to burn yourself. <laughs> yeah. I just I mean, you, with that. I, you give a professional an iPhone, a professional photographer an iPhone, they're going to take a heck of a lot better photo than you're going to take with their, you know, $6,000 DSLR. Right, exactly. Uh, you know, and that's just the way it is. So, but no, you're, you're fine, Gerard. If as long as it's dialed and tuned up correctly, it works great. Yeah. Always have somebody who knows what it's supposed to sound like. Listen to it. Yep. I think is, you know, it's like, you re and remember what you hear might be different from what somebody else might hear. And if you're doing it to satisfy your own ears, unless you really know what it's supposed to sound like, that can be a bit of a problem. Right. A uh, question from Michelle Blanker. I'll let you take that hey, one. Hey, Michelle. All right. Um, I was doing a Source Connect test today and I was having slapback. Is there a setting I need to correct? Slapback, echo, loopback, feedback, all these different terms latency, people use. All that, yeah. yeah, all these things people kind of mix around. Um, so slapback, she's probably talking about she was hearing herself slapping back or returning to her. So that depends on what kind of test you were doing, Michelle. So if you were doing an echo test, because they have a couple of uh, servers that are basically computers that just literally have the input and the output connected together. So all it does is loop the audio back. Um, if you're doing an echo test, the whole point is to receive a slapback or a loopback of yourself. And that way, you know, absolutely for sure, 100%. Yes, it is working. That means the audio is going out. It's coming back. It's making it both directions. 
doesn't sound garbled or droppy or dirty. It sounds exactly like you. That's a good thing. However, if you're doing a test like that with a studio and you're hearing that slap back, that means the studio is not doing it right. So whoever's on the other end, they don't have their mix minus set up correctly. That means they're sending you back to you. So if you're on a session with a studio in this new world of studios or producers oh, plunging headfirst into using Source Connect, um, then and you hear yourself coming back, you need to tell them, I'm so sorry, but I'm hearing myself echoing back from you. Can you please fix that? Yeah. Or mute your if, mic or whatever. If they can't, you know what you do? Okay, take one. <laughs> blah, 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 blah. Okay. How was that? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> because you got to be able to get the read in and not listen to yourself. So yeah, that'll, that'll throw you away. Good luck, Michelle. <laughs> really? Uh, Jeff Holman asks, and you and I were talking about that this week. How oh, yeah. important is certification, the $75 for standard version from Source Connect? I mean, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, I mean um, it could matter to some producer. Um, I don't know how they would find out if you're certified unless they're actually searching for your information on the Source Elements website. And then they happen to notice that you have the little C, a little tiny C next to your name saying, showing that you're certi certified. Or if you put a badge on your email address or what signature or your website or something saying you're certified. Otherwise, I don't think there's, there's a very low likelihood that anybody's ever going to see or know that you're certified. Because when they cast off of your voice, that's, you know, they're just casting off your acting. They're not going to know that you're about a certification. Right. I, so anyway, it's 75 bucks. If that's an easy spend for you, I think it's a no-brainer. I mean, because when you do it, it's, it's not just buying a badge. You're actually booking support with them, and they actually do talk to you real time, check you out, make sure you really do have it set up right, and they make sure your audio does sound the way it should sound. So it, it does have some value. It's it's not just buying some logo or something, right? And you know, and they are you know some of them are audio experts over at Source Connect. <laughs> you I might think, say. and and they know what it's supposed to sound like. And you know, like you and I know what it's supposed to sound like. You can you know, and we we have our studio certification or at least our studio approval with the uh, World Voices, mm -hmm. and uh, people you know take advantage of that, and that uh, helps as well. Or you can oh, send in a specimen to either one of us and. Or both yeah. of us. And Michelle, Michelle's answer to our uh, my comment was, oh, yeah. Okay, yeah. <laughs> yes, echo. LOL. <laughs> I think that tells us right there what kind of a test she was doing. Yes. <laughs> That's good. Randy McCartan? Yes. Um, I did a trial version of Source Connect a while ago. I'm planning on doing a buyout, which is buying the full the full cost of a license for $650. Um, but don't want to make that $650 investment until it's needed. Right. We, I've mentioned that all the time when we do our commercials. Is there a lag time between when you purchase and when you can start using it? Very, very little. I mean, it's, it's an automated shopping cart that sends out a license to you. So when you make the purchase, it then automatically will send you an email with your licensing information in it, at which time you go back to the website, you plug it in. It's not the smoothest, easiest thing to do, granted, but it is pretty immediate. In the old days, you actually had to wait for a human to do that, and that could take a few hours or a day, but no longer. It's, it's an automated process. So I wouldn't do it five minutes before the session, <laughs> I would do it the day of or the day before. Um, but no, you you can wait. It's 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 pretty much automated. You just have to plug in a serial number on their website. Yeah. Well, we're getting a lot of Source Connect questions tonight because that's what that's what they've been asking people to do. It's the it's and the topic of du jour, du week, du month. What's <laughs> the French on that one? Really? Um <laughs> Yeah, Matt Simmons asks. Does a Nighthawk extender, I'm not exactly sure what that is, just sit inside my booth where I can connect a hard line directly into my PC for best source connect sound? I cannot move my router from upstairs to my downstairs booth. Please advise. Appreciate you. 
What is a Nighthawk extend? Oh, that's a, uh, a, like a Wi-Fi extender? extender, a Wi-Fi extender unit. I just Googling it to see what that particular product is. Cause I, I know the Nighthawk brand, it's a Netgear thing. That's their, that's their like mega routers, right. the fastest ones, you know, they look like alien pods going to land on your brain <laughs> and eat it um, with a bunch of antennas. Anyway, they have an extender. So, so what, basically what he's saying is I got the router in one room. I got this thing in my studio. The two are wireless between each other. And then I have a cable going from the extender to my computer. Is that okay? Um, well, probably. It's still, it's still definitely better than just Wi-Fi from your computer to the router, probably. Because the, if, the, if the extender and the router are designed to work to, with each other and they're clearly from the same company and it should still provide an extremely rock solid network connection. Um, and also because again, it depends on the equipment. I don't know that particular equipment very well, but I will speak to like things like Eero and Plume, some of these other mesh network devices. And those systems are designed to not slow down the network when you're using them. Um, some of the older cheapy, uh, extenders would slow down the network and maybe cause some reliability issues. But um, I have to say, this is another one of those, I don't know, uh, your mileage may vary kind of answers, but it's still a, it's still a gray area. I'm going to say this, and I'm not saying, you know, do as I, don't do as I do, do as I say, but I am doing this show tonight, 100% on Wi-Fi. And I've done the last three episodes 100% on Wi-Fi. I've done all my YouTube lives lately, 100% on Wi-Fi. Um, and that's because I'm the only one here. Nobody is sharing it. I'm not fighting with 100 neighbors' Wi-Fi networks in a big, gigantic condo or in, in the city. So I have very good connectivity with nothing to interfere. So uh, in my case, it's been fine. Right. I'm still not going to recommend it, but it's been okay. All right. Uh, Jeff Holman, our chat room, uh, in charge guy says, uh, cause I think we answered this, the new Catalina update brick problem just for MacBooks or also MacBook pros and MacBook airs. I think you said it, it that hasn't been the issue that this is strictly a, a MacBook issue. Well, that's a darn good question. So MacBook is a particular model of Mac. So they have the MacBook series, right? They have MacBook air. MacBook Pro, and then they have MacBook. So that's what I'm a little bit trying to figure out. So it says um, a nine to five Mac reader observed that it killed a 2016 MacBook. Apparently it won't even power up. And the update has also had problems with a 2012 Mac mini, which ran insanely slow when it eventually finished installing, requiring a restore. Somebody on Apple Insider's forum there were reports that this one borked. That's a good word for <laughs> it. This one borked my 2012 iMac. And the update also allegedly bricked, another <laughs> fill in the blank silly word, a 2018 13 inch MacBook and a 2019 16 inch MacBook Pro. So it ain't just, well, this is again net anecdotal. And the, this article, the person who wrote the article has been. Googling around and reading people's experiences, but long story short, doesn't seem to matter whether it's a Mac, an iMac, or a MacBook Pro. You may have problems. Yeah. So back your stuff up. If you're not already on Time Machine or something like it, you better be, because if you do this update and you don't realize it's going to kill you, you want to be able to get back to work without uh, a complete rebuild of your system. So absolutely. Yeah. Back up. Save your data, you know, get a five terabyte drive up. or a six terabyte drive, save it from several so computers cheap. past. Yeah. You know, you'll find stuff like, oh, there's that movie of my kids when they were babies 25 years ago. That was uh, the funnest thing I did recently was I took an old archive of video and pictures from 12 to 20 years ago. Yeah. And I uploaded it into Google photo. Oh, cool. And so all of a sudden there's like all this stuff I haven't seen in years in my Google photo album which is kind of fun. Yeah, so I've done it's nice to too. keep that old stuff. Uh, Josh Keller asks, uh, I have a small isolation booth built soon. I will be having a small isolation built booth built soon. 
What would be your top three choices of mics type or brand for a cramp space that might end up sounding boomy? Well, you know, I would quickly say, well, it ain't the mic. It's the acoustics of the booth. Because people forget that these booths were not designed for voiceover. They were designed not to keep sound out. They were designed to keep sound in. And usually so a saxophone player could practice, practice rooms, right? You know, or a clarinetist, you know, that doesn't want right. to bother other people around if you're at a music school or something like right. that. And so we've sort of reversed engineered this for voiceover, but that reverse engineering requires item number one on what makes good home voiceover studio audio. And that is acoustics good. and small booths cause what we call bass reflex and other things. George, you've written an actual paper that was presented at the National Association of Broadcasters on small booth acoustics. What would you do? Yeah, I'm glad you brought that up. I, mean, I figured it was important. I wish I could find that. I, I, <laughs> I know it's in some book. They said it would be published in a journal. I'm like, I'd love to find that. Probably somewhere. lying under a pile of Us magazines or something. And <laughs> <laughs> um, Yeah, no, you can make a small, even a very small booth sound not boomy but it does take the right kind of acoustic treatment. It usually requires a variety of bass traps or different thickness of panels that are going to suck up all that boominess. It, but it is possible. I, I had a client who was in a tiny, tiny closet, just big enough to stand in there and pull the door shut behind him. You know, the monitor was like right in front of his face. It didn't seem like it was possible, and it sounded good. In that particular case, he was on a Sennheiser 416. Yeah. I find that the shotgun mics can be pretty forgiving in these really cramped spaces, which seems ironic or doesn't make sense because those mics were designed to be actually a lot further away and outside. up above your head. Yeah. So why would you shove it? And well, because of the way they're designed, they tend to work out okay in some of those little spaces. Even a mic like this, uh, the V4, this Vanguard V4, it's got, because it has a switchable pattern from Omni to Cardioid to Figure 8, you get the mic has different personalities and you might find by experimenting that one of those sounds way better than another in your particular space. And it also has a roll off or a low cut and a mic that has a low cut could also be your friend. So if yeah. the room has a lot of low end resonance, engaging that will roll it off. So there's a lot of mics with those switches on, even at the low end of the spectrum, like the audio technica, uh, AT2035, which is by far my favorite bang for the buck, entry level, work your whole career voiceover mic that has a low cut switch. Yep, so mics with low cut switches are good. Yeah. I, you know, what's interesting when you're in a booth, sometimes play this game and s squat up and down inside yeah. the booth. It's amazing. Get further away from the ceiling. Get uh, how lower. how yeah. your proximity to, to different parts of the booth will affect the audio. And then you might or move it. Wow, as I'm, you know, crouching down in fetal position, it sounds pretty darn good. <laughs> so, or move over, even move a, a half a foot to the left. Right. Or a half, half a foot, foot to, to the, the right. right. <laughs> and do that little dance. You might go, whoa, the sound just changed. Yeah. It's so, yeah. Pretty interesting. Mm -hmm. Our last question comes from Ruiz Ben, or it might be Ben Ruiz, depending on what you, but <laughs> he's from Belize. We have a listener and a viewer in Belize. Love it. He says, I have been recording audio from 1997. That's, that's a long way to try and record something. The sound's got to come around a few times. Oh, is recording, <laughs> is recording outside for some quick DJ voiceover wrong? I'm recording outside as we speak. Okay. What's wrong or right? But yes, I do the best recording I can. Great show, guys. Love your vlogs. Um, well, that's a good question. Yeah. So can literally, you record no, outside? no. No booth at all, right? Right. Um, you know, I theoretically, if it's quiet, should be recording fun. outside is a is a space completely devoid of acoustics. Uh, you're not going to have any acoustic problems. Well, maybe not outside in a racquetball court <laughs> or a tennis court, but or like garbage. outside it. Yeah, but outside in like a park or in your backyard, um, if it's if you don't have insects or birds where you live. I find that hard to believe <laughs> you could record um, outside and it could sound really quite good. You'd be shocked. It, it's, it's going to just have no reflection, no bounce, just this very dry, immediate sound. Um, 
So it can totally work. In fact, if I design a studio's booth well, it sounds a little bit like that, where you just the sound of the voice just kind of disappears into the ethers. You know, you don't yeah. get that boxy resonant sound. So In- interesting give it a shot. question. Yeah, I yeah, mean, it is interesting. I mean, we've been doing this show. You know, you've been recording since '97. So have we. And we've been doing this show for nine years. Never had that question. So yeah, that's first timer. Thanks for watching. All right, we appreciate that. We appreciate all your questions, and we appreciate you watching. And uh, if you've got a question for us for a future show, make sure that you ask it. And uh, by sending it to us at the guys at V-O-B-S dot T-V. The guy. You know what? I know it's getting late. Yeah. But can I bring up one more little you story? Bet. Actually, you said what kind of things have come up over the last couple of weeks. I just something something just hit your over. brain. Okay. Hit my brain. I'll keep try to keep it short. Start the clock. Um a voice actor client of mine, he couldn't find a place quiet enough in the house with his whole family home to record. He had a closet type studio or something, but it still wasn't cutting it. So he's like, so here's what I'm doing. I have a hundred foot mic cable, a hundred foot headphone extender. I have a, I have my equipment in the house. I've run it out to my garage. I'm sitting in my car in my garage. How's it sound? <laughs> <laughs> and we were connecting on source connect and I was playing with his audio settings and stuff. And he had happened to have an Apollo. And I was like, man, that sounds pretty freaking good. (laughs) So I thought that was a brilliant fix for, I can't get a quiet enough spot in my house right now. The kids are here. It's just, there's nothing I can do. Go sit in your car and run your kid. Now I think the running the cable thing is actually not a bad idea because if you were to just bring your laptop into the car, the Wi-Fi is going to be a nightmare. Yeah. It may not work at all or be really spotty. So in his case, computer's back in the booth in the studio and it's wired in. And it was a hundred foot mic cable worked fantastic. <laughs> it sounded great. So he found himself a little steering wheel desk. It li- literally like a, de- a little desktop that hooks onto your steering wheel and had his 416 up in, on, a, on a mic mount. And there you go. There you go. And Give it ain't it a rocket shot. science, kids. <laughs> it could help you. All righty. Well, that's going to do that for now. And uh, we're going to take a quick break and we'll be back to wrap things up into a nice, tight little wad right after this. This is Bill Ratner, and you're enjoying Voice Over Body Shop with Dan Leonard and George Whittem. VOBS.TV. Well, hey there, Hero. We interrupt the award-winning shenanigans of VoiceOver Body Shop for this public service announcement. 1.5 billion. That's how many students there are in the world. Primary, secondary, college, university. 1.5 billion. And that's how many were sent home several weeks ago, along with the 90 million teachers and professors who teach them. And as they left, those teachers and professors were all told by their principals and deans, hey, keep teaching your classes from home, okay? Yeah, you know how to do that, what, that Facebook Live thing and that YouTube and that Zoom thing? You know how to do that, don't you? Sure, everybody does, except many of those teachers don't even know where to start. What camera to use, what microphone to use, how to set up lights, how to use Zoom, and what makes online classes different from in-person classes. But I do. I know how to do that. I've been doing that for years, and I thought, well, maybe I can help. So I spent day and night for the past few weeks putting together a course on how teachers can do all that. And I figured, uh, you know what? I'll sell it for 49 bucks. Anybody can afford 49 bucks, right? But then at the last minute, I decided to do something different. I decided to set aside the money and give it away for free. So now through May 6th, any teacher can have the course forever for free. And I've got a favor to ask of you. If you're a teacher, or if you know a teacher or two, and with 90 million in the world who doesn't know a teacher or two, would you let them know about this? The course is available at teachyourcourseonline.com. And I'm going to ask Dan and George to make that link available on the VOBS website and maybe mention it a time or two on the air and in the notices that they sent out. Would you guys do that for me? Okay, great. The course again is at teachyourcourseonline.com. Help me help teachers be heroes at home as well as in the classroom. That's teachyourcourseonline.com. Thank you very much. 
As a voice talent, you have to have a website. But what a hassle getting someone to do it for you. And when they finally do, they break or don't look right on mobile devices. They're not built for marketing and SEO. They're expensive. You have limited or no control. And it takes forever to get one built and go live. So what's the best way to get you online in no time? Go to voiceactorwebsites.com. Like our name implies, voiceactorwebsites.com just does websites for voice actors. We believe in creating fast, mobile-friendly, responsive, highly functional designs that are easy to read and easy to use. You have full control. No need to hire someone every time you want to make a change. And our upfront pricing means you know exactly what your costs are ahead of time. You can get your voiceover website going for as little as $700. So if you want your voice actor website without the hassle of complexity and dealing with too many options, go to voiceactorwebsites.com, where your VO website shouldn't be a pain in the you-know-what. Your dynamic voiceover career requires extra resources to keep moving ahead. Now there's one place where you can explore everything the voiceover industry has to offer. That place is voiceoverextra.com. Whether you're just exploring a voiceover career or a seasoned veteran ready to reach that next professional level, stay in touch with market trends, coaching, products and services, while avoiding scams and other pitfalls. Voiceover Extra has hundreds of articles, free resources and training that will save you time and help you succeed. Learn from the most respected talents, coaches, and industry insiders when you join the online sessions bringing you the most current information on topics like audiobooks, auditioning, casting, home studio setup and equipment, marketing, performance techniques, and much more. It's time to hit your one-stop daily resource for voiceover success. Sign up for a free subscription to newsletters and reports and get 14 bonus reports on how to ace the voiceover audition. It's all here at voiceoverextra.com. That's voiceoverxtra.com. You're watching VOBS.TV. I don't know why. It's crazy what they do here. I think I'm going to go somewhere else and have a cheese sandwich. I could use a cheese sandwich right about... Oh, man, I'm starving. Yeah. Like, I, I got to say, I, I'm really glad David's doing that. I, I had thought, how, how would I reach out to all the teachers and educators stuck at home right now and needing to ramp this up, you know? So I kudos to... DHL the 17th yeah. for coming up with that idea. Absolutely. Hey, you know, uh, next week on this show, we've got Christine Aller. You know, fantastic. Eventually we're going to get out of here. You know, I'm going to get out of my booth here, out of the, out of my studio here. You're going to be able to leave the Canyon. Sue will be able to join us again here and we'll all get to be together. And, uh, but we have to start our businesses now from these new paradigms or restart them or, or adjust to them. And Christine is great at uh, helping you sort out your business thoughts because by she the way, helped uh, uh, us with tri booth as well. Did she? The product that we are launching. Yeah. We've been coaching with her about, you know, how to navigate this. Yeah. You know? Knows her so stuff. She's very, she's very good at helping with yeah. this kind of stuff. Yeah. Who are our donors this week? All right. We have some familiar names. We have Uncle Roy, Martha Kahn, Mike Gordon, Don Griffith, Harlow Rodriguez, Christy Burns, and Brian Roush. All righty. If there's another name, I must have gotten cut off. Oh, there it is. Michael Kearns. Michael Sorry about Kearns. that, Michael. Yeah. I had my window too yeah. small. Yeah. You know, we're, we're right now we're on this very expensive news set that we've that we've built here <laughs> during this uh, this period of you know tumult. Uh, but we'd like to see your booths. When George and I are together, it looks great when we're sitting in your booth. So send us a picture of your booth, and you can be the background on our show. Uh, do send it, however, in landscape, not in portrait, uh, because then it'll like blank sides on both sides. So we want to see it in, in widescreen there. Uh, let's see. What else? Um, you want to be in our studio? You can't until this is over. So... <laughs> Ah, uh, sorry. Yeah, whatever. Anyway, we need to thank our sponsors like uh, Harlan Hogan's Voiceover Essentials, Voiceover Extra, Source Elements, JMC Demos, uh, VoiceoverHeroes.com. <laughs> Source Elements, did we say them? Yeah, we Voice said Actor Websites. Boy, we plugged them a lot tonight. Uh, VoiceActorWebsites.com. Yeah, all righty. And of course, Dan, the Dan and Marcy Leonard Foundation for the Betterment of Live and Recorded Webcasting. Jeff Holman doing a great job in the chat room tonight. 
Sue Merlino doing it from home and getting it done. Make sure she hits that record button, and we're all set. And Lee Penny, simply for being Lee Penny. You know who you are. Anyway, that's going to do it for us this week. We're here to help you with your home studio. Ask your questions. Join us when we talk to our great guests, and join us for Tech Talk. And uh, just remember that if it sounds good... It probably is good. All righty. I'm Dan Leonard. I'm George Whittem. And this is VoiceOver... Body Shop. Or VO... B.S. Tech Talk. We'll see you next time, guys.